Blog Talk Radio. When you don't know, just go and ask for no the old dough. Oh, for a peaceful journey with you. All the places are ready to see the day. What you do, and when you don't know, just go and ask for no the old dough. Oh, for a peaceful journey with you. All the places are the same go. This is Ask the Unicorn, live with the Z Deliza, answering all your paranormal, metaphysical, and spiritual questions. Call us now at 718-664-9638. And now your host, Ahura Z. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ahura Z, and how are you all this evening? I hope that you are doing just fine. And if you're not, just hang on a minute. I'm sure there's that just fine feeling come along and get you. Now, uh, tonight I want to talk about some things that I keep getting bugged about, and I, I, I say bugged because... There's some things that we as human beings should be able to figure out for ourselves, especially when it has to do with our personality or those things of a personal nature. Uh, What I'm talking about right now, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, soulmates. We're going to get to that in just a second because I know that everybody has them on their minds. And those of you that think that you have found your soulmates, uh, congratulations. You don't have, if you have to ask me, I'm going to tell you no. So the best thing that you can do is just kind of, Think within yourself and say, okay, I found my soulmate, okay? But I'm going to open up that particular subject for questioning, and I'm also going to help you all out with it. Now, before I uh, get into all of that, though, I'd like to say uh, hello and give a very uh, honorable shout-out to a few people. There's uh, Charlie Alejandro, uh, who I call my sister. I want to say um, uh how are you doing? And uh, I hope to see you very, very soon. And it's because of you that I'm even doing a radio show. Uh, as a matter of fact, I can reach more people doing a radio show. And, you know, I've listened to your show, and your show is so inspiring, I just had to do it. It also goes out to Shelly Nunchucks, uh, my little sister. You see, we, I call everyone family that is actually qualified to be family with me. There are those that are friends. There are those that are acquaintances. But eventually I hope that all of those people wind up being family to me because it sends it far beyond those things that friendship and acquaintances have. Uh, I like to be able to look at people and say, hey, this is a part of me. So uh, that's a shout-out to Charlie. And, Charlie, make sure you tell Mel, you know, that I do appreciate him coming to see me when he did. Now, I know that you all have lots of questions I understand you all have a lot of paranormal things that you want to know about. This is one paranormality that I'm just going to start off with because I like to do a little bit of ranting on this particular subject. The reason I rant about it is because I kind of think that um, the whole concept of what we all like to call soulmates is is very beautiful, but I think that people are very ridiculous about it. You know, because you go into a supermarket in your little town, And you happen to see a guy, you know, more than once doesn't mean that that's your soulmate or that you have a psychic connection. And I keep hearing that, and it's kind of making me um, wonder about the intelligence of people. Or you have very high standards in a person, and your friends talk you into lowering your standards just so that you can go out with Bob or Jason or (laughs) someone like that. Uh, I, I, I tend to think that when it comes to something like a soulmate, uh, you really mean that that person, that is the the second part to your heartbeat. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, um, <laughs> I think it's really, really funny that um, there are people that come and ask me while their person that they are actually in a relationship with, if they ask me if that's their soulmate. Um, first off, I'm a very kind person. <clears throat> I love people. I love people like you wouldn't believe. I'm very kind. I'm just not a very nice person. In other words, I'm not the one that will do the pleasantries and say things, oh, yeah, yeah, that could be your soulmate when I know that they're not your soulmate. I'm going to probably tell you, listen, if you have to ask me, then the answer is no. Or that's not a question you really want to ask me right now, especially while this person is standing here looking as if, if, I, as if I say no, they're going to break out in tears. So when it comes to soulmates, let me explain this to you. Your soulmate is like your left hand or your right hand, okay? You know, they're they're like 
<clears throat> if you're left-handed, they're like your right hand, or you're, if you're right-handed, they're like your left hand. You don't have to ask anybody if this is if that's your right or left hand. Okay, so why would you have to ask someone if someone is your soulmate? I mean, I, I say this so often, it's beginning to sound like a bit of a broken record. Um, to find your soulmate is a very wonderful honor. If you don't find your soulmate, you will eventually, and this is just the truth. Those of you out there that are singing the song of the lonely heart, well, you know, I'm just meant to be alone, you know that's not the truth. You just like saying that because it sounds really good and you listen to many journey songs or something. You know, you you have a soulmate. We all have a soulmate. Even if that soulmate is someone that is that is not necessarily on a physical level, is someone that's on the inside of you that is an ideal, that is an idea, or that is a thought, or that is an entity that you can – find your peace with, you have that portion of yourself, so don't worry. There are many types of soulmates. I mean, there are people who swear that their dogs are soulmates. It's a little creepy to me, but okay. You know, they like their dogs. Um, there are different types of soulmates. There are soul companions. There are uh, soul siblings. There are those that are meant to be in a business relationship with you. There are those that are just meant to be there for you while you go through a troubled time. You can call those soulmates, but the one that most of you are talking about is the romantic type of a soulmate, in which case uh, I have to kind of admonish most of you when you want your soulmate, because all you really want is someone who's just going to tickle your fancy, so to speak, here and there. And <laughs> that's not all that a soulmate is meant for. <laughs> A soulmate is someone that completes you, and you complete them. There's no 50-50 bargain in being in finding your soulmate or being with your soulmate. That is 100-100%. You both give and give. There's not a give and take. I, I love the little sayings uh, about soulmates. Yeah, well, you know, it's a give and take relationship. No, it's not. It's a give and give relationship, you know, or if you want to have a take and take relationship, but there's no give, there's no, there's no give and take to it. There's no 50%. You give a hundred percent and hope that that person gives a hundred percent back to you. If they don't give you a hundred percent or they just don't know how you have to be patient with them until they do learn. Now, when it comes to soulmates, it is not work. You understand it. No, I'm talking to you, okay? The person that says you have to work for a relationship, no. No, you don't. Your relationship should not be work. Your relationship should be, of course, trial and error, but your relationship should be easy. I mean, it should come easy. You should still be sneaking looks at your partner. You know, you should still be saying really stupid things to your, to your partner, you know, like every once in a while, it's okay to be caught staring. You know, like, are you staring at me? <laughs> well, you know, I'm I'm being a guy because that's kind of how we talk when we get caught this stuff. You know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but anyway, um, you should you should be okay with it not feeling like you've been with this person for a really long time, and then you should be okay with feeling like you've been with this person for a really long time. And one important thing is when you do meet your soulmate or what you like to call soulmate, don't try to change the person. You know, don't – you liked them the way they were when they first when they first met you, okay? And if each of you can keep that kind of thing going on, it, it's fine. Now, yes, there's all the spiritual connotation to finding your soulmate. And I'm sorry, I, I'm not one of these airy-fairy people that just sit up and go, oh, you found your soulmate, and now you can begin your journey of being twin flame. Yeah, crap like that. I don't even want to go into that. You know, I just think it's very, very interesting. You know, the moment you meet the person that you know that you've fallen head over heels in love with, you know, you guys have this wonderful time for and then you begin to try to change each other. Like, for instance... Either one of you can take out the trash, okay? Either one of you can wash the dishes. Either one of you can cook. Either one of you can do these things that you do. When you first met, neither one of you were thinking about cooking or cleaning or taking out the trash. You know what you were thinking. 
okay, I'm not going into that, but you know what you're thinking. Why not be okay with that and just let it burn? You know what I'm saying? Um, I I think that it would be really, really wonderful if you didn't have to cook or even if you both didn't know how to cook and you were okay with that because peanut butter and jelly makes a wonderful lunch. You know, I, I don't know about anybody else, but I happen to like it, you know. And you can go out. There's so many different restaurants that you can go out to and just have an experience. It's okay. You're going to have to spend money one way or another. There are those people who say, oh, I don't want to go out and spend all of that money. But listen, you're going to have to spend money one way or another. You either spend it at Hannaford's or Shaw's, and that's not a plug. I'm just saying you spend it at one of the supermarkets or you spend it at a restaurant. Either way, you're going to have to eat. Or you can grow your own fresh gardens, in which case you'll have to buy the seeds. Okay, so can you kind of like try not to bully each other into doing certain things and taking certain roles? If you if you don't take the role, that's fine. You know, I don't demand that anyone cook for me. You know, I'm big enough that I can cook for myself. There are people who like to cook for me, and that's fine, and they can all tell you that I'm a finicky eater and I'm a bit of a, a six-year-old with my dietary needs and stuff. Uh, I'm a lot better now, but... You know, I don't demand anyone cook for me. I don't demand that anyone clean for me. I don't demand that anyone do anything for me, except for once in a while if I happen to lose my Xbox controller, I ask, where is it? <laughs> you know? But my point being, if you really want to find your soulmate, then you got to be worth finding yourself. In other words... A lot of us want our dreams. You know, we, we want that person that is our dream person. But, you know, the majority of you are just not willing to be the dream person. I mean, you got to be willing to be the dream person before you start asking everybody to fulfill all of your dreams. What about these people whose dreams need to be fulfilled? You know what I mean? They need to be fulfilled. And... Your soul may be out there waiting for you, the very person that can fulfill all of the dreams, yet you're being all stubborn, waiting for someone else to fulfill your dreams. Be the dream, and the dream will come to you. That's when you start talking soulmate. Okay? Oh, and uh, I'm not one of these people that agree with Internet dating. Okay, so uh, I'm sure that you guys can meet some wonderful people, and they work once in a while. You know, I'm not trying to push the the guy that says there and says what he has to say on the speed dating thing. I don't care. <clears throat> I'm just saying, if you're not man enough to go out and say hi to someone, you don't deserve anyone. If you're not woman enough to stand there and to go out and, and meet people instead of staying at your home and finding reasons not to go out thinking that some handsome prince is going to knock on your door one day and say, hey, I just noticed that you were living here that you don't deserve anyone. Go outside, meet people, leave the Sims alone, go talk to real people, you know? And you guys, you know better. Who would doing dreaming up your perfect girl on a video game? Shame on you. Go take your butt out there and meet someone. Man up, for God's sake. You know, it's okay. You know, you get rejected. You get rejected a lot. I get rejected a lot, okay? And, you know, maybe it wasn't because I was not tall enough or or I was too tall or I was big or not big. It just happens to be that that particular person wasn't really right for me. And believe me, if you go out there and stretch your neck out and the person is just nice to you and you wind up dating someone who is just not really cool, you'll regret it. So go on, take your lumps. That's what being a guy is. You go out there, you say, hey, how are you? My name is so-and-so. And the woman looks at you and says, did I ask you what your name was? Get away from me. Fine. Don't go shrink. Just say, I'm sorry. You know, I, I I, didn't mean to interrupt or anything. My apologies. And walk away. You know, but you got to start somewhere. Now, what what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to play your brief song, and then um, I'm going to come back, and we'll begin asking uh, questions. This particular song is right along the lines of what it is that I'm talking about. It's called Lover's Waltz. I hope you all enjoy it. Oh. 
Pisces Project, singing Lover's Waltz, very beautiful song. Now, uh, we were talking earlier, or I was talking earlier about soulmates, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the floor to questions, and uh, these questions could be anything of a paranormal nature, they can be anything of a mystical or metaphysical nature. Yes, I do have those answers. I'm a Hurizi, and I've been in this particular thing for over 30 years. As a matter of fact, I've been a paranormalist all my life. Um, I received training from a very powerful mystic, and uh, that was entirely my choice, and she helped me to hone my gifts from that point. I went on to develop them and um, began teaching, and I am still teaching. I teach at Unicorn Cove School of Metaphysics. That is now in Standish, Maine. Um, you can always call us, and uh, I will give you all the information later. Uh, but for right now, if there's anyone that would like to ask any questions whatsoever, I'm going to open up the floor. What do we got? This next question is from Ashley. She asks, what is the purpose for the low voices I hear often, and what should I do to deal with them? Okay, Ashley is hearing low voices often. And uh, first off, I would like to say hello and welcome to Ask the Unicorn, Ashley. Um, there may not even be a purpose for the low voices. Uh, the low voices may be part of your own spectral voices. In other words, we all have a full spectrum of voices. And sometimes those are our own thoughts or thoughts that we hear on the outside or thoughts that have invaded our particular consciousness from time to time. Now, if you were here in my con- in my um uh, presence, what I would actually do is I would give you some vibrational frequencies to listen to, and I would also help you with um, clearing uh, whatever negativity that you had on the inside out of you. Um, if you're hearing them all the time, I've given you a couple of techniques, if I remember. You, for you to say that you're still hearing them means that you haven't really been practicing those techniques. It's very imperative that you do. I know that from time to time things can be tedious. For instance, uh, one of my fortes is psychic self-defense. If I tell you to read Psalms 91 out loud, that doesn't mean read Psalms 91 out loud until you start hearing voices and then get scared and stop doing it. What I mean for you to do is you have to keep doing it. Understand something. This is the most important thing about uh, psychism is that negative things on this earth have never gone away. We just get better. Do you understand? You have to get better. In other words, you have to get stronger. You have to push them out of your consciousness so that they cannot invade you more. And that's going to take work. Okay? That's going to take a lot of work and it's going to take some consistency and it's going to take uh, almost a not necessarily dogmatic approach to things, but you're going to have to show some discipline. So, again, remember what I've told you. Some of the candles will help as long as they are unscented and they are white. They don't have any thoughts on them. 
Psalms 91 does help. Psalm 71 does help. You know, you have to do some physical work and keep yourself separated from those people that have those types of thoughts that will cause negativity in your life. You have good ears for you to hear those low frequencies. And a lot of people do sit still and hear all kinds of voices. But in your particular case, I understand your problem. It is because you're not doing anything that is going to help you distance yourself from the negative ends of those. So at uh, some point in time, we can sit down and we can talk again, and I can help you with some more things, some more techniques, okay? Hopefully that answers your question. And it's good to hear from you. Okay, what else have we got here? Uh, the next question is from Tony, and he asks, I have, um, he asks, I have one, and it's, oh, sorry, hold on. Uh, all right, we're going to move on to Annabelle's question, and it's, she asks, not long ago, a lot of people were saying that Earth was rising to the next dimensional level. She wants to know what happened. Um... <clears throat> Well, on that particular thing, uh, Annabelle, uh, good to hear from you, of course. Um, listen, when people say things that the Earth is rising to the next dimensional level, listen, the Earth is always multidimensional. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't agree with a lot of the parties that like to make it seem like something has just happened, like there's an event that has just happened. The Earth has always been multidimensional. You have absolutely, you have no idea the amount of or how many dimensions that the earth actually operates in in order for it to move at all remember it's sitting out there in the middle of a solar system with no strings to hold it in place that means that it has to exist on more than one dimensional dimensional level that means that it has to exist on probably millions billions of different uh, dimensional levels in order for it to be the way that it is okay you have to think about it we are so close to the sun, yet so far, but if you actually saw a picture of the sun in comparison to the earth, it would seem as though we're right up under it, but we haven't burned, which means that it has to exist on so many different levels. You know, even science, uh, modern science or whatever kind of science, even pure science, can't really explain the mystery that happens in space. They could try to and tell you it's, you know, molecules and atoms and crap like that, but the truth is... There's no real understanding to it. So when you say something, when a person says something, <clears throat> the earth is on its way to its next dimensional rising, that's mostly a bunch of hogwash, okay? Now, if you said that humans are evolving to their next level, even though we are multidimensional, that would make more sense. Now, if a person doesn't evolve to where it is that they said that they're going to evolve or where it is the agreement is or whatever there is that says that we are supposed to evolve to the next level, that means that perhaps there's a hitch in the gears. You know, you, you kind of have to think of it that way. But the earth is the earth, no matter what. The earth is the earth. And I tend to uh, theorize, and I'll say that quite clearly, theorize, because there's some things that I do know, yet... I don't know how many dimensions the Earth actually exists on, but I can tell you it is more than one. In fact, it is more than a thousand. That I know. Then we get a little foggy. It's kind of like, you know, I understand the solar system, but, you know, the galaxy stretching it, and if we're talking about the universe, I really have no concept of what the universe is, and nor does anyone else. We like to believe we do. But you're talking about an ever-expanding dimensional experience that goes on and on and on, true, uh, somebody uh, likes to say that, well, we were created by the Big Bang. Okay, I believe that. I'm into that. I'm into the Big Bang Theory. Just so that you guys know, you know, I'm a very responsible mystic. You know, I, I can deal with the Big Bang Theory, but someone had to light the fuse. That's my whole point. Okay? So you can't shut out any possibility. So I'm going to say to you that since the Earth exists on so many different dimensions, there's no way to say things any of us in this existence to say, well, the earth is on its way to its next dimensional level. That is just ego, <laughs> you know, bottom line. Because the earth is always evolving. It's always expanding. The universe is always expanding. The earth both destroys itself and recreates itself simultaneously. And to tell you the truth, the only reference that we ever have 
to things like that is a whole wheel of birth and death. You know, we don't even understand reincarnation yet, which is why most people are not necessarily afraid of death, but they're afraid of what's going to happen before and after. And then they get all freaked out and say things like, I don't believe in God. Well, the truth is they do believe in God. They just don't want to know whether or not it's for real. You know, so there's a lot to think about with that particular question. You know, there is no what happened. Maybe it's what didn't happen, or when is it going to happen. Keep your options open. Things may happen when you don't expect them. Okay, I hope that helps you. Okay, and the next question comes... I know Annabelle's sitting there going, what? <laughs> she's, she's got a lot more questions to ask. But, okay, um, but let's move on to other people. Let's move on to Marina. Marina asks, what is the connection between phobias and past lives? Hmm. The connection between phobias and past lives, well, it depends. Um, if you have a phobia of being, uh, for instance, you have claustrophobia, maybe you were sealed inside of something. Uh, maybe there was an experience that caused you to be very sensitive about your neck or very sensitive about your head. Sometimes there may be no connection. It goes back to the question that I just uh, addressed is that, there's so many different dimensions to who we are and who what the earth is. You know, there are a lot of people that are afraid of clowns. I don't get that at all. You know, uh, were they accosted by a clown in their last life or maybe they were a clown in their last life? You know, I don't I don't think that there's too much of a connection. I think that whatever phobias you have, realizing that a phobia is not necessarily just a physical thing. Excuse me, just a mental thing. It's also a physical thing. Because whatever you're thinking mentally that has to be con it has to be connected to your emotional body will affect your physical body as well, so perhaps it's in this life that certain things have happened, but perhaps you fell off of a cliff, which is why you're afraid of heights, but there has to be a complex a complex situation to go along with it. It's not just you um being afraid of heights, for instance, I know people that feel as though the edge of a cliff is drawing them to it. It's like this uh, ineffable feeling that they're being pulled by the edge of the cliff. And I've seen people actually have the reaction of laying down when they get close to something that looks like a cliff. There are people who's, who can stand on a ladder and their hands start sweating because they're so nervous. That has more to do with something of a dimensional experience and just maybe they fell when they were a kid. You know, so it, it can go both ways. It just kind of depends on what your situation is. If you are afraid of the dark, maybe someone scared you when you were little or perhaps you were in a very dark place in another lifetime and something happened to you then. Or perhaps there's absolutely no reason for your phobia. You just heard a loud noise when the lights all went out and you freaked out. People that are afraid of horror movies, not because the movie's going to do any danger to them, because but because maybe subconsciously they remember something, something that had maybe one tenth to do with the actual situation that they are watching. You know, you really, all of us should really go on an adventure within ourselves to find out exactly who we are, to find out exactly those things that have maybe happen to us, <clears throat> not in the last life, but in this life. My teacher used to say this to me, and I found it to be pretty true. Uh, if you want to know what you did in your last life, what are you doing now? <laughs> I mean, you want to know how you were in your life, your last life? How are you now? You can't be that much different. I mean, maybe your ethnicity was different. Maybe your size was different. Maybe your race was different. Maybe your... Your your gender was different, but you can't be very different to, at all because we all carry things with us that mean something to us that are very deep-seated within us. So maybe you carried a phobia with you. Then again, maybe you carried a fear that something that you were doing to someone else could happen to you. And that may be the cause of your your phobia. It's worth examining. We all need to go on our own self-examination. I think it would be absolutely astounding. You'll find out things about yourself that you never even knew, nor did anyone else know. 
Instead, what a lot of people do is they go to these psychotherapists and other kinds of therapists that sit there and do things like, while you're telling them all about yourself, they say, mm-hmm, yes, hmm, I understand. Let's look into that. Perhaps we can explore that. Hmm, so tell me about your mom. Give me a break. All of us have the power within ourselves to find out dimensionally exactly who we are. And then, if we need help along the way, there are people that are qualified to help us. And believe me, just because they have an alphabet behind their name doesn't qualify them. It merely means they went to school to read from books that have been around for 40, 100 years that really don't tell you anything, or that have been around for such a long time they have a bunch of fancy names and people who can even face their own issues, but they're going to try to tell you. And listen, for those of you that need counseling, that need like child counseling and marriage counseling, please make sure that the person either has kids or is married. If they are not, they are not qualified to talk to you about Jack. And I know that I will offend a lot of people out there. I'm sorry. No, no I'm not really. But this is just who, this is just who I am. Listen. All of us owe it to ourselves to explore ourselves. If you need help along the way, there are teachers, there are guides. I had teachers and guides. I was utterly lost. And it had it not been for that one woman that stood out and said that she accepted me, I'd still be lost. So, and believe you me, she was no psychotherapist. I was psycho. What did I need a psychotherapist for? There's another person that was psycho. Most people who get into therapy only get into therapy to try to fix themselves. And then they offer you nothing. I once listened to this one psychotherapist that reminded me that she was a licensed psychotherapist four times. Uh, and she, a guy called in to ask for advice, you know, on drinking. And, you know... This woman sat up and told him that he she he should look to his higher power and find that with the un, in himself. What the heck was that? You know, at that particular point, that person's higher power was that bottle. It was the, the alcoholism. You got to do more than that. You have to offer them something, some kind of discipline, some form of thought that will help them get through. Don't tell them about their higher power. They have no clue what their higher power is. And if they did they probably wouldn't be on the bottle. People need help, not platitudes. Anyway, I'm getting into ranting. I probably shouldn't do that. Now, uh, I'm hoping that what I did give you about that subject is helping you, though. Staying on the subject of phobias, I have another question. And this person asks, in my case, I have vague memories of injuries from axes. As a result, I am quite afraid of them. How do I safely work through it? There's an old saying. One has to face one's fears. You have to realize that the injuries didn't necessarily come from the axes. They came from the person that was using the axe. Or perhaps it was something that you did yourself accidentally. You're going to have to pick up an axe. And you're going to have to learn to use it and learn to respect it. And it's as simple as that. It may take you a long time. But if you pick it up and you put it down and you pick it up and you put it down and you go through a regimen of doing things, carry it around for a while, you will get past that fear. Understand something. I, I saw this in a movie and I've been telling people this for a while. Fear is a choice. <laughs> you have a choice to be afraid of something. If you get injured at something, that's that's different, okay? But now you have to face that particular fear, and you have to face it down. You know, you pick up that axe and realize that it can do absolutely nothing to you that you don't allow to happen. And this is the truth. Just start simple. Go buy yourself a brand new axe and say, this is my, my disciplinarian. This is my companion. And you, you hold that axe and you, and you put it down and you realize that the moment that you put it down, it is done. There is nothing it can do to you. Just make sure that it's safe. And you will decide whether or not that axe goes to work or not. That gives you power. So if you start there, that's fine. Uh, if you need more help, I'm always here. 
Uh, I'm here 365 days a year. And, you know, I love my job. I'm always looking for a better way to do it. So if you need more advice, you can contact the school or uh, contact my assistant, and she'll help you out. Okay, uh, speaking of that, we're going to take a small break so that I can give you all the information that uh, you all need in order to contact me or to contact the school. Uh, I will be back shortly after this small break. You're listening to Ask the Unicorn, live with Ahura Z. Deliza, answering all your paranormal, metaphysical, and spiritual questions. Like Call us real. now at 718-664-9638 to speak with Ahura live on the air. If you have a personal matter that you would like to discuss with Ahura in more detail, he offers telepathic readings and telepathic spiritual counseling sessions by phone and Skype. Ahura also teaches private classes in an array of subjects online using Skype video. For more information on classes and services with Ahura, please visit Unicorn Cove School of Metaphysics online at www.unicorn-cove.com. And now back to Ask the Unicorn. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am back again. Um, I know that you all have lots of questions. Uh, as I understand, there are probably a couple more. Okay, this next question is from Tony, and he asks, Is the unbalance within society attributable to some degree to all references to the goddess being removed from most religious texts and her not being recognized by a lot of faith? Uh, perhaps. More than likely, listen. In order for you to say a God, yeah, and I, you know, I argue this a lot. And uh, there was a point that I just decided not to argue it anymore. We have two species that are prominent on this planet. That's male and female. Uh, we're all the same species to a degree. Um, you can't very well say that God made man in His own image and not realize that someone had to make women. Um, I, myself, am very goddess conscious. Um, I'm also very Christ-centered, uh, realizing that if God and goddess made us in their image, that means that if there are children on this earth, both of them had to be there present. <laughs> and um, that means that God and goddess were both here present in order for all of that to happen. So, So definitely, yes. I mean, it's like trying to do anything that is yang without yin. It's just not going to work. Or anything that is yin without yang. It's just not going to work. No matter what anyone has to say, there must always be the balance. And if you take one equation of the balance away, then nothing can be created. Remember, even in old texts, and I can't speak for every text because I know that a lot of them were fabricated, and I also know that a lot of them just don't speak the truth. But this, I have to say, is true because it rings within me. Where are two, where there, wherever there are two or more, and they're gathered in the name of God and Goddess, they're there. That was proven. Always proven. So you can't just have the one. And by the way, Adam... That word Adam, like we always say, we like to make these romantic stories such as Adam and Eve. Um, listen, in the Bible, it does say this. It says, Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam. Uh, the key phrase, their name. Adam merely means first to me. So uh, you can't get rid of the goddess. And if I'm present... You'll have hell trying. Um, remember, all of us are children. We're just children that are running around playing adult. We're the children of the true kingdom and the true queendom. Don't forget, don't forget that. Okay, I hope that helps. Now, I'd like to play a song because I like playing songs. Uh, this particular song is going out to all of those that our vets, because I know you all are having a hard time right now. 
um, with our government shutdown thing. And I'm not going to say too much about that except for I think that when people like uh, Congress decide that they don't want to go to work or they want to stop everyone else going to work, they should be fired. And that's exactly the way that I think about it. But I want to send this out to the vets. Several of my students are are either in training or deployed, and uh, I just want, them to let, want to let them know that I'm thinking about them. So all you troops out there, this is for you. That was called Last Man Standing. I just wanted to make that dedication to the vets. I hope you all heard it, and I'll play it again at your request. Now, uh, I think that there are some more questions. I have time for a few more. Okay, this next this next question comes from Nadine, and she asks... Hello, Nadine. What does it mean when you keep seeing the numbers 555 and 999 everywhere on receipts, clocks, etc.? What does it mean? I think you should be thankful it's not 666. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, it just depends. Um, you know, we get spooked out of a lot of things. Uh, although I teach there's no such thing as coincidence, 555, actually, if you did the numerology, would add up to 15. 999 uh, adds up to 28. <laughs> 27, excuse me. And uh, because of that... Um, you might have to look at the actual numbers and it will add up to a 27, which is actually 9, which has to do with Sagittarius, which has to do with either self-realization or revelation, which means that something is trying to be shown to you. Anytime you get something in a triplicate, you always have to go back to the base, and the base of a triplicate is 3, okay? And then you can span from there, okay? For instance, remember what I've taught you about dimensional things. We're the third dimension. We're also the third planet from the sun, which means that that means something. We're also known in the uh, the third dimension, which is prevalent uh, to us and only to us, 
Okay, so you have to go back to those threes, and then you have to say, well, what is it that's trying to be shown to me in a scale of three? It may mean that you're dealing with a trinity or a heaven and earth and then come together. Okay, so you really have to think about what that means. If it's five, five means change. Five is also transition. You've got three different sets of that, and if I understand correctly, you have been in the process of looking for a job which means that you're going through a transition, and that transition may enable you to get the job. Now, if we're talking about a nine, we're talking about triple nines, which has to do with the transition, which will lead you to completion. So perhaps you just need to open your eyes a little wider, and uh, that job will be there sitting, sitting, waiting for you. So hopefully that does help. What else you got for me? Uh, next question is from Annabelle again. She asks, Halloween is coming up. It's said that spirits walk and the veil between worlds is the thinnest, allowing ghosts to contact us. Is that true? No. Absolutely not. Okay, it may it may be, it's not that they allowing them to contact us. You know what? You have to think of us as humanity. We're a bunch of spoiled children. We contact the ghosts. Okay, yeah, they may walk, but they always walk. <clears throat> Understand this. That whole thing about the one night that the ghosts get to walk, that was all made up. It was pretty much made up. They're always walking. They're always around us. You have to understand that millions upon millions of people have lived on this earth and died on this earth. And maybe they go on to their, their next lives or their next existences that may not always be on earth. But they may be on Earth, so they're always here. You don't have to go ghost hunting. I mean, it's kind of a game. People go poltergeist hunting or ghost hunting, which I find really remarkably stupid. But, okay, <laughs> you know, you don't have to hunt for ghosts. They're all around us. Listen, the building that I live in uh, was built in 1774. And uh, from time to time, we get some ghosts here. Okay, the last building I was in, that was very, very haunted because it was a funeral home. But these places have been here long before you and me, and there are bound to be ghosts all over the place. It's just whether or not you are aware of them. I mean, there could be ghosts all around you following you, and then you're waiting for Halloween to say that, you know, this is when the ghosts walk and the veils are really thin. Um, I appreciate the mystery and the mystique because everybody likes a good scare on Halloween and everybody really likes the adventure of Halloween because it's one of my my favorite holidays and I'm sure it's one of your favorite holidays. But don't be fooled by the trends and fads. Don't be fooled by the stories. As a matter of fact, many of the stories were made to instill fear in children, which is kind of mean. <laughs> if you think about it just for a second, I mean... You don't have to instill fear. All it does is cause paranoia and it causes people to do the wrong things, like go out and buy Ouija boards and crap like that. And then they go and do things and then they come running on my doorstep telling me something's following them home. I I don't like dealing with that. In fact, at that particular moment, I just want to tear the Ouija board apart and burn it. And that's all that should be done with Ouija boards. And all of you out there that are saying, oh, they're not that bad, shame on you. Stop doing that. You're wrong. They are bad. They're evil. Now, if you want to be evil, fine. But don't go and tell everybody else that they're not evil. Uh, those things have caused so much damage to people's lives, and I've had to go in and fix them. And I'm talking over a 25-year period. You know, so I know about these things. You know, that's why I'm a Z. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. That's why I'm a Z. I'm good at what I do. Now, um... I think what I'm going to do right about now is take a few more questions and then we'll have to move on. Yep. Uh, this next person asks, I've heard you say that if someone were possessed that they wouldn't be able to call you for help, that if they were able to call you that it was probably obsession, not possession. What is the difference and how can a person tell if they are possessed? Okay. Let's understand something. To use the term possessed, means that someone else is in control. And more than likely, they're not going to want someone to come in uncontrol. Okay? They're not going to want you to get help to be so they can be ousted. So they're not going to let you. 
And obsession is a little different, okay? Obsession is when you're 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 just so obsessed with the idea that you are doing things, um, maybe because of some subconscious flair or because you came in contact with something that it's totally eaten away at your mind, but you still have your faculties remaining. In other words, you still have some some possession of your faculties. Okay, that's usually when the person calls me and says, hey, I think I'm possessed. And I say, no, no, you're, you're not possessed. You may be obsessed, but let's find out what the real problem is. Okay? Because there are lots of people who are obsessed with the idea of being possessed. And uh, it's a very scary thing to have to deal with someone who may be possessed. It's very scary. So there's a huge difference. One of them, you are not in control. Do you understand me? You are not in control. That is possession. That means you don't have any control. Obsession, you have control. It's just that it's, it's a it's strong compellence to do things or to be a certain way or to say something. It's a very strong compellence. Neither one of those are to be sneezed at. They are not child's play. They are not things that you just kind of, you know, one day it happens. You have to, there's a process to all of them. Most people go out and they intend on doing something just to prove whether or not it's wrong. But the bottom line is this. If you go out there trying to prove whether or not possession is wrong, you're a fool. Because in the end, you're going to find out one way or another. And even if you don't get possessed, you are inviting possession. That's absolutely nuts. But if you do, there is help for you. There are those that can help. I myself being one of them. Now, un understand that, you know, possession is not something to be toyed with. And it's not even something to talk about. Okay? If you can avoid talking about those kind of things, avoid talking about them. Because all they'll do is get in your head and they'll start eating away at you. You know, they'll start, you'll start being afraid of things. And that's the last thing that you want. You know, so... Um, there's a big difference there, and that's absolutely right. Someone else would have to call on your behalf, or something would have to happen on your behalf. Even if it was divine providence, it would still have to happen on your behalf. Obsession, you could pick up the phone and call yourself. And there may even be some interference with it, because I've had people call, and there was just a remarkable interference, but they were okay. In the end, we dealt with the problem. Now, understand this. Once the problem is dealt with, you have to keep it gone. If you're clear, you've been free and clear from whatever entity is attacking you, don't go back and invite it just to test to see if it's going to be okay. If I tell you something like, listen, you can't hang out with these people anymore. If you do, the same thing's going to come back. Don't give me a reason why you have to hang out with them because I'm not interested. You know, uh, no exorcist would be interested. It's the same as if you got out of jail and you were told you can't do this anymore. Were well, you going to tell the cops, listen, there's a reason that I have to do this. You'll take your butt right back to jail. There's really no difference here. The dynamics maybe, but that's about it. If I give you an assignment and, you know, we've just depossessed you and I've given you a an assignment, then you are to follow that assignment to the letter. Don't come and tell me how, you know, you talk to these people and now you're back in the same situation that you were and tell me it didn't work. No, the depossession did work. You were the one that did not work. Okay? So I hope that answers it. I, I'm very serious about those possession things, okay? Now, um, it is, we are at the end of our uh, show tonight. I hope you've all enjoyed the show. I've definitely enjoyed it myself, and I look forward to uh, talking with you all again. I understand that a lot of you could not log on. Um, we're going to fix that for you, and hopefully all of you will be able to log on, because I do enjoy talking to you on the phone. Until next time, I am Ohura Z. Deliza, and I am here for Ask the Unicorn. Now, if you have any questions whatsoever, please write them all down and I will get to them. I promise you, I will answer them all as I can. Till next week, 
Have a wonderful evening. Please have a wonderful evening. You've been listening to Ask the Unicorn, live with Ahura Z. Deliza. If you have a personal matter you need help with, Ahura offers private telepathic readings and telepathic spiritual counseling sessions by phone and Skype. Ahura also teaches private classes in an array of subjects online using Skype video. You can learn more by visiting Unicorn Cove School of Metaphysics online at www.unicorn-cove.com. If you have a question you would like to hear Ahura answer on a future episode of Ask the Unicorn, you can email it to questions at asktheunicorn.com. Ask the Unicorn broadcasts live every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Blog Talk Radio, www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash asktheunicorn. When you don't know, just go and ask for Don't the Old Dog. Oh, for a peaceful journey with you. Of all the places on Ready the Old Dog. What do we do? And when you don't know, just go and ask for Don't the Old Dog. Oh, for a peaceful journey with you. Of all the places on this one go.